Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury of Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School and what we're going to talk about this morning real quick is making up a fishing kit with simple components that you may have lying around. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a hook. Stay with me and we'll get started. Okay, so the one thing that we need for a hook to be truly effective is it needs to have a barb on it so that once you hook the fish you don't lose them. And the way we do that here is we take a simple piece of flat stock like this and we take like a four finish nail. A number four finish nail works are really good for a hook. And it's got just a little bit of a swell at the end of it because it's a finish nail. So it gives you something you can tie a line to with like a nail knot. So I just pick through them and I get one that's got a good size swell on the end of it. And then I lock that thing in the vise at a little bit of an angle to this metal plate just like this and that's going to allow me to cut the barb in with a small chisel from the top like this Okay, now that I've got the barb on there, I'm going to lock that nail in a vise with about whatever length I want the shank to be in the end, which is about half of that nail. I'm going to lock in that vise completely, just like that. Now I can take a pair of ring pliers and I can actually turn this by hand just real easy moving up the length of the hook just like this to get the turn in the hook that I want and you have to play this by ear a little bit until you get used to doing it and just because you can turn this thing in a vise with a pair of pliers does not mean that a hook the hooks gonna straighten out if a fish hits it because you're talking about fairly small fish for hooks like this you're not talking about a 50 pound catfish So then I just look and see what I've got on here for a throat. The space I've got between here and here, I make sure that the point is straight and that I still have an exposed barb. And then I can shape the hook the way I want to a little bit. If I want to straighten that out just a shade, I can just lock it in the vise and straighten it up a little bit, just like this. Turn it backwards a shade like that. And just get the shape of the hook that I desire. And that's going to give me a hook that will definitely catch a fish. Okay, so the next thing we want is we want some kind of a strike indicator. And what we're going to use to make that with is we're just going to use a wine cork. And I've got a bag with a variety of wine corks. And you can get these for free if you just go to a local bar or something like that or a restaurant that serves wine and ask them to save them back for you. They'll save them for you. But you're going to have to go through the corks and get you a good one because some of them, depending on how they were opened and things like that, they can be pretty cruddy. This one here has got a pretty nice shape to it already. Won't require too much of a sanding. It's got a little bit of taper to it on the bottom. So all we need to do is drill a hole through the top up with a drill press. That's the same thickness or diameter as the rod we want to push through it. And then we'll be able to adjust it from there for the way we want it to look. Now we could do this portion with just a hand drill or a handheld drill. We wouldn't have to have a drill press necessarily for this, but I've got one, so I'm gonna use it because it makes it pretty convenient. So I'm just gonna find the center and drill a hole straight down the center of it, just like this. Push it up on there. Make sure it's good and cleaned out. And there we go, we've got our hole centered up. And now we're going to make the middle part or the indicator part of our bobber that's going to be pulled underwater with the bobber that will also allow us to adjust the depth of this bobber on the line. So what I've got here is I've got some dowel rod that's about 3 16 rod that's going to fit right up inside of the hole that I just drilled and it's a pretty tight fit and that's what I want. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and turn on a belt sander. And again, you could do this by hand. I'm just going to cut this thing off with the side of the belt sander to length. You could do that with a saw very easily, no problem. And then I'm just going to take and round or point the top of it like a normal bobber would be pointed at the top. And I could paint this with some type of fluorescent paint if I wanted to, just to give it that visibility from far away. And I'm only looking for something that's about three times the length of my cork for my strike indicator. Now what I'm going to do with the bottom of this is a couple things I can do with this. I can just run my string up, turn this off. I can run the string right through this hole and then push the stick in and that allows me to, number one, it's going to hold the bobber on very well. And number two, it allows me to be able to adjust it up and down the string to adjust the depth that I'm fishing very quickly. But I'd also like to be able to put this bobber on with some type of slip knot if I've already got a hook tied to my line, maybe I'm fishing the bottom and then I decide I want to suspend my bait. So to do that, I'm going to need a little bit of a cut in here. And I'm going to do that with just the side of this belt. And all I'm going to do is come in here and cut an angle. Just like that. And the side is a step angle. And what that will allow me to do is allow me to catch a slip knot, a string, on that strike indicator. So now I have two ways that I can use this. I can either use it directly on the line or I can run the line through the center of it and use it like that. Now I could shape this on a sanding belt or with a sander, but to tell you the truth, because this cork's already really nicely shaped and it's tapered, it really looks good just the way it is. So I'm gonna leave this one the way it is and make a couple more for my kit. But that's how simple and quick that is to make yourself a couple strike indicators. Okay, so the next thing I need is I need something that I can wind or wrap line around to put it inside of a box or in my pack so that when I cut my pole out off the landscape, unless I'm going to carry something out there, but even then I want multiple lines wound around something so that I can have different setups. Maybe one of them is a fly line, one of them is a drift line, and one of them is a bottom fishing line that I can use to put quickly on and off of the different fishing rods that I'm using, whether it's bamboo or tenkara or just some branch that I've cut off and I'm just using this right out of my kit. So this can be made out of anything from any kind of light or hard wood to a heavy piece of plastic of some kind to even a piece of aluminum or it could even be made out of bone. But we're going to just take this and make an H pattern out of it to wind the line around and we're just going to do that by bumping it against a grinder just a regular bench grinder. So I'll show you that right now real fast. Okay, so I've got a spool of bank line here, and this is, I think, number eight bank line. Fairly small in diameter. It might be six. I've got three hooks that I've made here. I've got a strike indicator and a line winder. So now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to figure out how much line I want to put on this line winder. And generally speaking, I usually use about 15 foot on a line winder. That way I can use a pole that's up to 10 or 11 feet long if I want to and still have a little bit to where if I lift it up in the air I can still grab the end of that line and that's something like a 10 car rod or a cane pole you want some extra line on there and then if you're going to use something that you've cut you'll probably want to attach the branch or attach the line midway down the branch in case it snaps off so you don't lose the fish in case you get a bigger fish but if you're just fishing for small stuff and it doesn't really matter too much, then you can just put this on the end. So what I generally do is, the first thing I do is I just tie a bowline knot in the end of this thing. So I turn a loop over on it, and a bowline doesn't have to be very big. Come through the hole, around the back side, and then back through the hole. I've got other videos on tying these knots. But I don't want that bowline knot or that loop in that bowline to be overly big because my plan for that is to use it in tenkara fashion where I just fold a lark set into that 
and connect that to some kind of a Lillian braid or possibly some type of an eye depending on the rod that I'm using and then I just trim off the excess now I'm going to pull off 15 feet approximately or about three poles of line or what you would call fathoms of line which is your outstretched arms which is generally about six feet or equal to your height in my case it'd be about five foot eight so if I pull three fathoms off of here I'm gonna have a little over 15 feet of line now I'm just gonna take this line and hook it onto one of the ears of this line winder just like this and then just wrap it around and this is nothing more than something to hold this line in my kit, in my pack, in my tackle box, wherever I decide to put this line. And then there's the end of it right there. We can just slide this line right through the hole in that bobber, just like this. Bobber, strike indicator, whatever you want to call it. Push this in, just like this. And then tie everything down here to the bottom. And as the weight pulls down, it's going to float that cork a little bit canted like that. And that's a good way of doing things. If I don't want to do that, and I want to use a line that's got a hook on it and put a strike indicator on it whenever I feel like it, or if I feel like it, that's why I've got this step cut in here. Because now, I can take this line, and I can turn a simple slip knot in that line, and I want to use the line that's going down to the weighted portion that the fish will be pulling on, is what has to go back up through the loop, just like this. Alright, I pull that loop up through there. And I'm going to put that loop in here. And what that's going to do is it's going to tighten this down into a slip knot. And as this pulls, it's going to pull that knot tighter when I pull here. So I've got a slip knot in that line. It's connected here. And it's going to float like this at that point. And this is pulling the knot tighter all the time. It's also a fairly easy knot to get out because you can pull on the opposite end of it just like that. And it will loosen it up. And you'll be able to pull it straight out of the line like that. So it's very convenient for putting on a strike indicator taking one off. Alright, so in this case, we're not going to put a strike indicator on this line to begin with. I'm just going to put a hook on here. And to do that, I'm going to use a very simple barrel knot. Okay, so we select the hook that we want on this line. I kind of like the way that one looks really, really well. So we're going to use that one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my line and I'm going to put it down the hook and I'm going to take one, two, three, four wraps around that line. And then I want to bring this line up and go back down through all of those loops. And it's a little bit tricky to do that, but if you just kind of loosen it up a little bit, or if you put something else, a tube over the top of it, you can do the same thing. You do that a lot when you tie, tie like a nail knot or something like that. But you're going to want to bring this back through each one of those loops. And you kind of have to loosen them up a little bit to make that happen. And you get used to manipulating that. And that's another reason you want to be able to tie this stuff on ahead of time and not mess around with it later. But it's fairly simple. And then once you pull it down through, you can then tighten everything up and you just pull from both directions on the line until you get that thing tightened down. And as you pull down, what you're doing is you're pulling up and down at the same time. Go ahead and slide that barrel knot up right up to where that head is and cinch it down tight just like that. Yank hard on it and as you pull up on it, or something tries to pull up or down on it because it's hung, it's going to make that knot tighter and tighter so that it can't come off. You could also take and you can clip that end off right there and you could actually belt it with a lighter right to the rest of that knot and again it's not coming out that way. Alright so when I'm done I just wind my line around and if I'm using a soft wood for this I can take my hook point and just bury it into the wood. That's why I like to use soft woods like cedars, poplars and stuff like that for these line winders because it's real convenient. Throw my strike indicator and a couple extra hooks in there and I'm ready to go. Now, let's talk about sinkers or weight. If we want to put something on here that's going to 
take the bait down faster or take it to the bottom. Remember, we use a nail, and nails are fairly heavy to make our hook with, but you may want something a little heavier than that. And what I find real simple is if you can't find sinkers or you can't afford to buy sinkers or you can't make something out of lead, what you can do is just use a small nut, like a hex nut, maybe a 5 16 size or a 3 16 size hex nut, and just put a loop through there and put a lark's head on it and you can adjust it up and down the line wherever you want it and it will give you different sizes depending on the size nut that you buy it'll give you different amounts of weight that you can add to your line but that's a real cheap simple common man way of doing it okay guys i appreciate you joining me real quick today for this video on how to make a quick makeshift fishing kit out of materials that you may have laying around now i used a lightweight bank line for my line on this and it's just something that I'll get used to using a lot for fishing but you can use any kind of monofilament, dacron, spider wire, whatever you choose to use to make this kit with. The point of this whole thing really is how to make the hooks, how to make a strike indicator and a line winder to give you something you can stick in your backpack, in your pocket, in a, in a pouch of some kind and gives you something that you can fish with on the fly because all you really have to do is cut a branch. I appreciate your views, I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. For all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.